All right, my friends, so we are trying out a new piece of software today, and this is uh, the new Luminar Neo. Now it's beta, so just be aware, this is beta software. So we were uh, fortunate enough to get a little email asking if we'd like to try a pre-release version, and I was like, yep, since I've tried all the previous Luminar software, uh, and uh, we wanted to see, see how well it does. So we've got it loaded up here with some of their uh, demo photos and uh, some of our own photos. So let's let's see how it how it performs. Now the first thing to be aware is that this again is beta software. Now this is supposed to come out in a, another month or two. Uh, so we shouldn't be expecting perfection out of this by any means they are still doing some tinkering but there are three main features that the beta version has enabled which are kind of the showcase features of neo so we definitely want to kind of show those and see how they do as well as we'll look at some of the previous versions uh, or previous features that are in neo that were in luminar ai uh, and see if they have been updated now we have a bunch of photos like this photo here was a photo that came as demos, demo photos. This one over here, demo photos. Uh, this one down here, demo photos. But I've installed or imported a bunch of my own photos because of course, companies like to send photos that the software will work really well with. So uh, let's start with this photo here, uh, which, is, which is a great picture. Um, and one of the features that uh, has been in Luminar for a while, but I think has been uh, expanded is sky replacement. So if you just kind of scroll down here, you'll see sky. And because this photo has sky in it, the AI inside Neo has detected that we can do sky selection. But I want you guys to look at the water as we do this. So we'll come in here and find something that's a little moody. So just something we'll pick, we'll pick this one here. And you'll see this gets the new sky, which is cool. But we also start to see that reflection down there. And I don't know if you guys noticed it, but we do get uh, a color tone shift inside the physical buildings. So it seems like the colors, especially like in the whites, kind of takes on that tone. So we do have the ability, of course, to be able to play around with the sky position. So moving it up and down in that photo. And we do see that that reflection reflects in the water. So that movement, vertical position as well. So we have her horizon position vertical position and horizontal position so we can move that around to get that sky exactly the way we want it we can also flip it around to get it the other way as well as things like mask refinement inside here to make sure that it's getting those edges properly closed gaps fixed details uh, and things like relighting strength so you can actually see here we are actually relighting the foreground to make sure that it matches the cloud as well as saturation, relight any humans that are in the shot. We can play around with the reflection in the water, how that is being reflected, which is awesome, and the amount of blur in the water. Lastly, we can go up there and do all that kind of similar stuff with the physical cl clouds itself. So we can blur those because maybe the clouds are way in the background and because of that, they shouldn't be sharp. Uh, we can add grain atmospheric haze to kind of put on there if you want we can warm those up cool them down and brighten or darken this the whole kind of it kind of does the whole scene in this aspect because we got that reflection as well right so normally it would just kind of be playing with the sky but because the sky is so heavily reflected here we're seeing that the the water is getting that as well Really, really nice uh, sky replacement, especially because of all the reflections it does with water. Uh, makes it look pretty, pretty natural, actually. Uh, you can do really, really uh, bad sky replacements. Now, the one thing that's nice, too, is it does come with, I don't know, 20 or 30 different like skies. You can go here and buy packages of more skies. Or, uh, as far as I know, at least you could in Luminar AI, you can add like your own skies. So if you have photos of skies that you've taken in the past or you've bought another sky pack somewhere else, it just uses those photos and you can place them in the background. So that 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 I like. Um, also, and we'll kind of come down to this photo. Uh, one of the standard things, of course, that Luminar AI has in it, which is 
pretty standard nowadays uh, is the erase tool, but it actually does a really good job. So we'll just kind of make this brush just a tad bit bigger and we'll kind of go through here and get rid of this, this fella here and this fella here. Just kind of go through and do get rid of all these people in the water because we didn't end this, this guy back here. Uh, erase and usually this does a pretty good job just kind of hold tight there we go um, not bad now looking at this as a full photo it's hard to see where those were taken out now of course if you do zoom in a bit uh, you can see in this section a little bit right in here you can see where that person was taken out the edges don't quite match but that's easy enough for us to fix later on the other ones actually did did actually very well um, so great great an erase tool now again this is a photo that was kind of designed for this will it work as good with other photos uh hard, hard to tell you know i always find with erasing tools you uh sometimes sometimes it does well sometimes it doesn't do as well as you would hope now one of the new features that i thought was really cool and i'll bring up this photo is you get a photo like this and you get these power lines now, you and I can take out power lines with the erase tool. Uh, it can be very, very tedious without question, but they've got a new feature in here called, let's go back to our erase, uh, remove power lines. So we just give that a tap. It kind of just checks out the photo and boom. Yeah, that's, that's not bad. A uh, few little streaks in the sky here where you can see that the power lines were removed but that's fairly easy to fix up if you wanted to, uh, just by doing a bit of cloning and some smudging, get that back together. But other than that, you know what? It, it did a really good job. And this is a photo we took just with an iPhone. No no, no issues there at all. I think that, that removal actually is really good. But we did test it on a few scenes. So number one, we have a scene here. I think it was this one here. Uh, yeah, so power line here, two power lines, and a power line that runs through the back right here. So same idea if we come in here to remove power lines, you'll actually see that it pulls those out well, but it doesn't see this one. Hit and miss. Uh, it's definitely anything that has a power line over a fairly solid color. It seems to pick that up actually really well. Uh, that, that you and I could go in afterwards. We could just kind of bring our brush down and you know just kind of give that a little little pull right there we should be able to pull that out not too bad right same idea over here just kind of give that a little little slide whatever it didn't hit that's that's going to be really hard for anybody to notice that you've done that because of the amount of texture so but this one here not bad and, and again we get a little bit of light smearing where it pulled it but uh, easy, easy to, to, to fix. So I think that did a pretty good job. Now, it isn't always perfect. So that's probably not something that they want to uh, be shown, but same idea, power lines here. Just, to guy, just so you guys realize that the, the software is not perfect, right? And it's sometimes it's gonna work, sometimes it's not gonna work. And again, this is beta, so it could also get better, um, but we'll do a remove power lines here and You'll see for the most part it, it does like it does a good job especially in this area but if you if you zoom in and kind of look you can see that it's pretty smudgy and murky and you know especially if you come over here there's a lot of misses uh so is it perfect no uh can i play with this sure and in the final version, for some reason, it's not doing it in mine, but you do have the abil ability to deselect, which means that I could come into certain areas that it pulled and I could say, put that back. So kind of manipulate the mask and then you could kind of clean it up yourself. Um, but my version of the beta is, seems to be having an issue with that. But again, beta software, so I'm not going to hold that against it. Um, so we've talked about the new feature is number one is the power line removal, which is kind of cool. Now, the next one that kind of goes along with that is the uh, dust dust removal. So if you have dust on your lens or dust on your sensor. Now, I didn't have any photos that actually had any dust on the sensor. So I went online and I just found this one. And this is a photo that someone took. 
uh, with with dust. There's plenty of dust on that sensor, right? And that can be an issue with a lot of us that have changed lenses out in the field or you just didn't notice that you had something on your lens. This, this actually can work really well. So same thing, erase, same area. You'll see a remove dust spots, click. Like that's that's really fast, effective, works great. Now I wanted to see how well it worked or if it would understand kind of between dust and something else. And so I brought up a photo like this one here, which has a lot of snow on it, right? A lot of snow. Um, and I think this is just my thoughts is that it's looking for anything that's uh, kind of looks like a smudge, but also is has a blurry edge because a smudge would be really, really close to the sensor or on the glass. And because of that, it would be really soft. Uh, so when we come in here on this one and we do that remove dust, this takes a little bit of time because there's so many specks on this photo again because of the snow. But if you look at these kind of two right there, there they went right? They disappeared, but all these other ones stayed. So you can kind of see those two kind of come back forth. So it's not going to get rid of all this, but again, you and I could with, with little and no issues, just kind of come in here and just kind of get rid of all these. And if you did it really fine, it's kind of a poor, poor way of doing it. But if you kind of came here and did kind of one at a time, you could get rid of those dots. Not, not a big deal. So we have power line remover and we have dust remover. Uh, dust remover works actually really well. Power line works really well in certain scenarios. So pretty cool. Uh, last but not least, and kind of the one that I like the most, and again, they have this demo portrait photo, but I'm not gonna use it. I'm gonna use a photo of my daughter and my wife. Uh, and this photo here, you can tell, uh, the background's actually exposed fairly well. Uh, and because of that, the foreground was dark. Now with exposure, of course, we're gonna either brighten the whole thing or we're going to darken the whole thing, or we're gonna have to take this into a program like Photoshop or whatever and do some masking. Or we can just edit here and you get this new feature here called Relight. Now Relight, you'll see brightness near, brightness far. And this does take a little bit of time to kind of load up. So when you kind of pop this, just give it a second and there it goes, right? So now you can kind of see as you move this, that where it has that mask on the foreground, right? Because it's kind of done a, almost like a 3D map of the image to kind of figure it out. So I can be like, oh, I kind of like that right there. But with the far ground, I can darken that, brighten that, kind of get that where I want it for that separation and then play with the depth. So you can actually see from the bottom to the top that ch that change in where it hits. And you kind of kind of hit that that horizon level where that distance starts to kick back. So I could be like all dark. Nope. Same kind of brightness till the water kind of ends right about there. Very nice. Good. And you can go into advanced settings too. D halo is going to kind of play around with the edging and you can see that if I bring that up here, you can see because it's artificial intelligence, right? You can watch that edge change forward and backwards as you play with that just to kind of get it where you need it to be depending, right? Depending on what you want it to look like. And you have, if you want to warm up the front or maybe cool down the back or cool, cool, cool the, or warm the front, warm the back, whatever you want. I'm going to cool the back down and warm the front up a bit. And now if you look at before and after, like before, after, that's a fairly big difference. And I think that's a feature that you could see a lot of people. Now, what I would like to see, uh, I'd like to see that edging just be a little nicer because uh, it's not bad on like the shoulder or things like that, but you can definitely see there, right? That edging, a little rough. Uh, now again, this was, I believe, uh, taken with a with an older camera. So you're not gonna have that resolution that you would get with newer cameras. But still, it's definitely has some, uh, definitely interested to see where this feature will go because there's a lot of times you and I get in scenarios where we either have to expose for the foreground or the background. Now we can kind of play around and as long as we uh, don't lose, like don't blow out the background or foreground, we should be able to play around a little bit more so with the two of them to get them exposed how we want them. Luminar Neo. Yeah. Uh, I'll leave links to Luminar's website if you're interested. I've used Luminar, Luminar AI, 
uh, and, I, and I've bought and purchased myself Luminar Neo. Uh, I'm, I'm interested to see what the final release is. Again, this is beta, uh, so it's not going to work perfectly. And it's also limited to the features that it actually has set up and functioning. It was kind of just a test of those main features. And I like, I like where it's going. I like where it's going. All right, guys, if you're interested in Luminar, head on over to the website. Again, links down below. And that's it for me today. Like, comment, share, subscribe, hit the little notification bell. And we will definitely have a updated look at Luminar when the full version comes out. And uh, that's it for today. Later, my friends.